Hey there Dev Squad Fertis here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Sequencer series. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use camera tracks to create awesome cinematics like the one you can see on the screen now. We're going to be going through how you can use movement tracks and field of view tracks to make all of this possible and by the end of this video you will be 100% comfortable with creating cinematic fly throughs. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so now we're inside of Unreal Engine 4, we can show you how camera tracks work inside of Sequencer. So as you saw in the cinematic that we showed you at the beginning of the video, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to implement a camera and then move it along our timeline inside of Sequencer and it's surprisingly easy. So the first thing that we're going to need to do then is actually create a camera actor that we can use in the Sequencer. So go over to your search classes in the top left and then type in camera and then find your camera actor and simply drag and drop it into your scene just like that. And what you're going to notice is when you do click on that camera actor, it is going to give you a preview of what that camera can see. And that's incredibly important as this is something that you're going to need to refer to as you go through and use this movement track. Now, once we set up shots and all of that good stuff, we'll be able to see it in our cinematic viewport. But for now, just take a look at the camera preview we've got there. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be following this cube that we've got moving moving along, so we're going to be focusing in on that. And to do it, we're going to be moving the camera from left to right. And by the end of this video, you're going to be able to take that knowledge away and use that to create your own cinematics where you're flying through a level. So what we're going to do is move this camera over to the start position, which is just in front of the cube like this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add this into our sequencer. To do that, what we're going to do is inside a sequencer, go to add track and then actor to sequencer, and we are going to search for our camera actor, which is something that we've just created. So plus track, add to, and then type in camera actor, click that and you're now going to have this in here. So by default in your camera actor, you are going to have your camera component and a transform track. The transform track is going to be used for all of the movement and then the camera component we have access to the field of view which is just going to change us the viewing angle, something which we're going to be showing you as part of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my sequencer window a little bit bigger just like that and then what I'm going to do is go into my transform track and as you can see here we've got location, rotation, and scale. So what we're going to do is move the location one because that's the only one we really need to change. Changing the scale of a camera is going to do absolutely nothing. Rotating it will work and you can take this knowledge from the location and add that to the rotation as well. The principle is exactly the same. So what we've got here is our location in our three axes. So X, Y, and Z, and you can see the corresponding axes in the bottom left of our viewport here. Now, what we need to do first of all is create ourselves some keyframes to say this is the start position of our camera. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this camera and we are going to move it over to the left just like this. And then we're also going to be rotating it so it faces the cube as well. And over the duration of this little sequencer shot, we're going to be rotating this and moving it over to the right, tracking that cube. So with this done here now, we're going to expand our rotation and our location, and we are going to add a new key for both the location and the rotation. Moving on from there, what I can do now is I can go ahead and take my little viewfinder here and I can move it over to the end of the sequence. And again, all I'm going to do is create a new keyframe for location and rotation. But what we're going to be doing is changing these values in the second keyframe that we've got here at the end. So the one that we're really after is going to be the Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these keyframes and then I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to move it to the right. And with that done, you're going to see those values in the bottom there are going to change as well. 
And then what I'm also going to do is select this stuff for the rotation. And we're just going to rotate this towards that cube there. So now that we've got our second set of keyframes, what we can do is start manipulating this data to get this camera to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Y here and then I'm simply going to be moving this over to the right on the Y. But when you do that, make sure you have that keyframe selected. And as you do that, you're going to have this blue line here showing you that movement. And you can just keep moving this left and right on the Y, just like that. You've also got the X as well, which is going to be up and down if that's something that you want to work with. And then lastly, you've got your your Z as well. So have a little play around with that. Now, this little motion that I've got here going from left to right is exactly what I'm after. With that being done, what we're going to do now is go into our rotation and actually change the rotation so it's going to follow the cube. So it's going to be aiming at the cube at the end of the sequence because it's moved over to the right, but it's not focusing in on that cube. So what I'm going to do is select these three keyframes here. And then with this, we are going to take our yaw and we are going to face this back towards the cube here. So you can see all I'm doing is just taking this number down at the bottom here and facing it towards the cube. And now if I go ahead and take this viewfinder back to the beginning and then just press play, you are going to see we have got a nice little cinematic with the camera moving, rotating and following that cube. So hopefully by now you guys are going to have a better understanding of how you can use keyframes to change where your camera is going to be going, how it's going to be rotated to essentially track and follow objects and you're going to be able to create those cinematic fly throughs. Now the last thing that I wanted to show you with the camera is the field of view. The field of view, like I said before, is just a viewing angle. What we're going to be doing is over time throughout this sequence of ours, we are going to be changing that viewing angle. So I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning of our track here. I'm going to go to my field of view and then I'm going to add a keyframe on this. Now notice by default, the field of view is going to be set to 90. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to frame 44 here and then I'm going to create a new keyframe for this. And I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit. So I'm going to set this to 72. And then at the end, I'm going to take this, I'm going to add a new keyframe and I'm going to set this back to 90. So essentially what this is going to do is change our field of view. So we're going to go in and then we're going to go out and you can create some really dramatic shots by taking advantage of this field of view. So let's go ahead and take a moment to see exactly what we've created. So we're moving our camera. We're adjusting that field of view to really focus in on that cube. And then we're finishing off just like that. Anyway, guys, that is everything that I wanted to show you for the cameras. There is a whole Whole lot more you can do with cameras once you mix it with other types of tracks but for now guys stay awesome keep creating your boy versus signing out